It's a new year and everyone is out on a dating app looking for love. Get yourself out there, but do yourself a favor. If you haven't updated your profile in the past three months, it's time to make some changes. Book an appointment with me on the Answipe Right website and we'll get your profile ready for this new year. In the meantime, listen up. In this episode, I dive into dating profiles and I share details on how I build them for my clients. You ready? Let's go. Welcome back! This is the second episode of Dating Hotline presented by Anne Swipe Right, the dating consultancy setting the standard in online dating. This is your host, Chloe Miller. Last week, I forgot to tell you guys about my amazing music. Shout out to my friends over at Sound Lounge in New York City. Executive producer Becca Falborn hooked me up with this talented composer, Nicholas Thorpe, and he whipped up some musical transitions for Dating Hotline. Check out Nicholas's work on Instagram at Hippie Tribe and Sound Lounge on Instagram at Sound Lounge NY. Hippie Tribe is spelled H-I-P-P-I-E-X-T-R-I-B-E and Sound Lounge is Sound Lounge NY. As the founder and CEO of an online dating consultancy, I'm constantly asked, what should I put in my profile? It's a fair question. I mean, I get it. It comes with the territory. So that's why I want to share with you how I approach dating profiles and what my recommendations are for that right swipe. Filling out a dating profile is easy, but making a good dating profile requires more thought than you think. Dating hotline, question number one. How should I approach my dating profile? Your dating profile is your sales tool to land a date. If you've never done sales before, this is your crash course, and let me tell you, it's a people job. You need to create something, in this case, a dating profile, that will attract a right swipe. I want you to look at your dating profile as a window of a digital storefront. You have six different pictures and roughly three sentences to place around your digital window to bring someone into your digital store. You should be thinking about how you can attract someone into your store. How are you going to stand out? This is why, number one, you do not pull pictures from social media. Social media pictures have a completely different intention behind them. When you're taking pictures for social media, most times it's a passive experience. It's just documenting the experience, recognizing that in this moment, these people are important. This is a moment that you felt a certain way and you wanted to share this with the world. So in other words, social media is really just a storytelling tool. Instagram specifically because of the progression in chronological uploaded posts. This creates a social media story that runs parallel to our real life. Your dating profile is not the same. It's not even remotely the same process. Your dating profile is six pictures that do not change. Three sentences that do not change. You do not have this upended scrolling option to find better or more attractive pictures of you. You do not have the option to scroll through and find the funnier comment that you connect with because this one fell flat. Your dating profile is your highlight reel, okay? You better be using it with the best pictures you have and the best responses to your, these dating questions. Think about it like this. It's like writing your mission statement on your resume, but yet this is for your dating life. Your resume gets you a job that pays you cash. Your dating life gets you a date who becomes your partner. This dating profile gets you a date. 
If you're on a dating app, to some extent, that's what we're all looking for. I'm challenging you to put more effort into your dating profile and then look at the results that you'll get back. It's not a lot that I'm asking for. Three sentences. All you need to do is think about the prompts for a while, leave, come back to them a couple hours later, and then write your responses. It's incredibly important to be conscientiously aware of where your dating profile pictures are coming from. Also, knowing your intention behind your dating profile will help you understand why pulling pictures from social media will not get you towards your goal. Dating profile pictures are taken for a completely different intention. These are specifically styled to show you off your personality and or taken to show off who you are. These should be custom. They should not necessarily be pulled from social media. However, if you do pull from social media, be aware of what you're using. Do not use couple shots. My number one complaint is when people share their dating profile with other people. You have six pictures and you cannot make yourself the focal point? No, come on. Six pictures, you guys. You got this. Do not include other people in this, please. I also really don't like to see guys and girls in the same dating profile. If I'm looking at a guy's dating profile, get all the pictures of women out of your profile. I don't care if she's your sister, your mom, your grandma, or your niece. Tell me, what are you getting out of this? No, I don't care. I want to know who you are, not about other people. Save these pictures and stories for a date but take them out of your dating profile right now. But wait, let me back up and tell you a bit more about myself. My background is in talent management. I studied journalism and sports studies in college and got my first professional job at Comcast Sportsnet Chicago, which is now known as NBC Sports. I worked with high-profile celebrities at charity events and occasionally reported on Cubs games. Fun fact, I interviewed the late Roy Halladay back in 2010 for a post-game interview the same season he pitched a no-hitter and won the Cy Young Award. Yeah, I had some great memories from those days, but that's where I got my feet wet. I then left Comcast Sportsnet to move into talent management in the advertising industry. I worked with filmmakers to represent them commercially, but specifically, I focused my career on Hollywood and spent time working with Academy Award-winning feature film directors and multiple different feature film production companies. I focused on crossover careers, they had successful feature careers, and I was responsible for filling in their schedule between feature film productions with commercial shoots. Directors you might recognize, Doug Lyman, he directed The Edge of Tomorrow, The Bourne Identity series, um, Morton Tildum, he directed Passengers in the Academy Award winning film The Imitation Game, Tate Taylor, he directed Girl on a Train, Anne Fletcher, she's done just about every rom-com you can think of, Hot Pursuit, The Proposal, 27 Dresses, uh, the late Danny Liner, he directed Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle, Janusz Kaminski, he's Steven Spielberg's cameraman, so any Steven Spielberg film you can think of, Janusz Kaminski was shooting that for him. Top drawer filmmakers, and I had a lot of fun in advertising. Plus, I have some really great friends from the industry, and just like any other job, The people make the work fun. After I left Comcast Sportsnet, I started working for a representation firm as a junior rep. A fast four years later and the little bird was kicked out of the nest and forced to fly. So I grabbed my dad, a pivotal figure in the Chicago advertising industry, and we started our own representation firm, Miller Miller. Shout out to my dad. Thank you for being my biggest fan and teaching me everything I know about business. But you guys, (laughs) I was 25 And I was definitely more than I could handle at the time, but it's what I needed to do. So I was like, yup, let's do this. And that's when I first learned how to start a business. Lesson here, always say yes. You never know what value the lesson will bring. As a co-founder, I was doing the exact same thing that I was doing at the previous company, but with about 500 times more stress. Overnight, I went from junior rep to co-founder and managing director of a talent representation agency. I was 25 and I founded a company in an industry that I only had about four-ish years of experience. And guys, that was a big leap. Let me tell you, I made my mistakes and there were some rough days in there. There were a lot of days in there when I would leave my office and just go cry in the stairwell. I would call my best friend and just be like, I don't know if I can do this. 
I really don't know how to manage all of this. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't understand why I'm being rejected so much. This is just so exhausting and it's draining. and It's just, it's simply defeating. But I stuck with it and it taught me a lot. Working in talent management and especially with high profile people, I learned how to strategically create and position profiles for a successful match. In other words, I was responsible for securing work for my directors, right? My directors are not pitching themselves for these commercial projects. That's my job. So I would create digital profiles out of films and short bios and match make brands and filmmakers for TV advertising commercial campaigns. Yes, it's possible to create a happy match if you create the right pitch. This is what I want you to do with your dating profiles. Position yourself online so that you become appealing to those passing by. This takes strategy, original content, and effort. Your dating profile is your personal branding campaign. You need to sell yourself appropriately. This is your personal branding campaign. Use it strategically. Don't just fill out mindlessly. Craft it into attracting your ideal partner. If you need help articulating your message, make an appointment with me on the Answer Right website. Okay, so what's the takeaway on question one? Putting more thought and effort into your dating profile will produce better results. Talent management is proof of concept for digital profiles. Online dating needs to catch up. Recognizing that your dating profile is your sales tool to land a date should change your perspective on what you want to include. If not, then keep listening because we discuss that in our next question. Dating hotline question number two. What do you put in your dating profile? Okay, first of all, it's a fact. Profile pictures are viewed first and then your bio is read. Your profile pictures have to catch their attention. If they are not interested in your profile, they are not going to read your bio. They're just going to scroll right past and swipe left. Here are my tips on what to include in your profile pictures and how to get people to stop swiping left, but start scrolling through your profile. Number one, start with a clear picture of yourself looking at the camera without sunglasses. Take off your hat and present yourself. We want to meet you, so don't hide behind sunglasses or a hat or even a shadow. Step into the light and smile for us. This introduction picture is best when it's not a selfie. You know, something about that selfie arm just takes the picture down so quickly, and honestly, the selfie angle makes it look cheap. We like pictures that are mid shots, so think waist up and framed well so that the focal point is you. Number two, showcase what your life is like. Include pictures of what you do normally. I wanna see a glimpse into your life. Show me what you're all about so that I can definitively say, you look like fun. I wanna talk to you. The exception to this rule is vacations. Everyone loves a quality on holiday shot, myself included, but those are best used with context. Unless it's as obvious as the Eiffel Tower, geotagging the picture helps to offer more information around the picture and also another opportunity for me to like your profile. Number three, use the captions and add more context to your pictures. Hinge just recently updated their app to picture prompts, and personally, I hate it. I think these prompts are cheesy and inauthentic. I see why they did it. This is them providing conversation starters appropriate to your profile, but frankly, I haven't seen them used well yet. My advice, skip these prompts, but use the caption of the picture to create context. For example, In my dating profile, I have a picture of me in a yacht in Thailand, but the location isn't easily distinguishable. So I made my picture caption, not responding to emails at gmail.com, and I geotagged it in Thailand. Men who have traveled to Asia usually swipe right to this one. Okay, now let's talk about dating profile bio writing rules. Keep these in mind when it comes to dating profiles. Here are three simple steps to keep you on the path towards that right swipe. Number one, 
When you're writing your bio, write like you're writing to someone. Have a person in mind. Don't just answer questions as if you're answering something and blasting something out in response. Write it as if you're writing to your perfect partner. Don't respond with a formal answer to a dating question. Relax. Be casual about it. Then respond. This brings me to my next point. Tip number two. Clever responses get engagement. But don't be punny. Those are just annoying. The difference between clever and punny is depth. Guys, I'm talking about punny, P-U-N-N-Y, P, punny. Punny responses are shallow, low-hanging fruit jokes that really don't say anything about the person. When you read them, the only response is a chuckle and then the conversation usually dies. It's slapstick humor. Clever responses, on the other hand, show effort, interest in your own life, and a bit of a playful vibe. If you can make fun of yourself and still smile, it's a good quality. You've set the tone for some playful banter, and that is digital flirting. Out of the three dating questions I've answered in my dating profile, my clever response to a social cause I care about, stimulating the economy through international tourism. First of all, I'm telling you that I love to travel internationally. I live abroad for part of the year. I'm smart and I understand finance. Hey, yo, adulting. And I have depth behind my comedy. It's a real crowd pleaser. This is called two-stepping. When you create a response, then take it a step further into a new direction. I like to travel as a basic response, but responding with stimulating the economy through international tourism to the social cause I care about prompt is not normally where you would think that information would be shared. It catches your attention. Tip number three, add in humor. Always, always, always use humor when you can. Remember, this is your digital storefront. You need to attract people into your store. Humor, done well, is the best way to draw in a crowd. Our advice, if you're writing your own dating bio, run your jokes past your friends. Test these because writing funny is not the same as being funny in real life. It's a skill that takes time to hone your craft. Practice and keep editing. Your jokes will come to you. But cut through the dating profile noise with comments that are enjoyed. But lastly, who would I be if I didn't advise you on what not to include? Here we go. Pictures with an artsy filter. Pictures with bad lighting or shadows. Poorly cropped photos. Pictures that do not include you. Pictures that don't show your face. And pictures that are not part of your highlight reel. Comments that are negative and exclusionary. Having taste and standards is one thing, but you can still have tact. Typos. Guys, check these responses. It's silly, but it's still your first impression. And ugh, please don't. Don't share emotional baggage. Keep it light. And remember, you want them to come into your store. So how are you going to entice them in? Ladies, check out Answer Bright's blog post sharing five staple first aid outfits that every woman already has in her closet. There are some good tips in there and everything is shoppable. And guys, check out Answer Bright's blog post sharing 10 dating app conversation starters for him. And please don't use, hey, what's up, ever again. You're better than that. Okay, so what's the takeaway on question two? Keep the focus on you. Be clever, not punny, and check the Answer Bright website for resources to help you succeed in online dating. We post new content on our Hot Stuff blog regularly. It's time for this week's dating successes and dating failures. Dating kisses. Uh, Who remembers the days of the FBO status? I do. Facebook official. That was so nice. Back when you were like definitively telling someone if we were in a relationship or not. You know, when there was clarity. JK, there's never been clarity in dating. It's always been a gray area. But our dating kiss goes out to guys who still ask to be official. The traditionalist in me likes the official starting point. Even if both parties know, signifying it and acknowledging the beginning makes it sweeter. 
And our dating curve of the week, one of my clients told me this story the other day. She went on a date with a guy who told her that he was in beverage distribution. Two days later, she walks into Starbucks and sees him behind the counter slinging drinks. Or should I say, distributing beverages. This is so bad. Don't lie about your shit. Authenticity is always well received and dishonesty is not a good look. If you're not happy with things in your life, make a plan to change and focus on that. But lying has disastrous consequences. Okay, that's our show. Thanks for tuning in to Dating Hotline presented by Answipe Right, a dating consultancy setting the standard in online dating. This is your host, Chloe Miller. If there's something you want to talk about in the future episodes, there's a link in the show notes where you can submit your question ideas. Thank you to our music transition composer, Nicholas Thorpe, over at Sound Lounge. Go follow him on Instagram. That's Hippie Tribe. That's H-I-P-P-I-E-X-T-R-I-B-E. You guys, DM me your dating questions. Email me your thoughts. And please, please, please tell all of your friends to listen. Shout out to the two amazing humans who already left us a review. You make me so happy. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and follow us on Spotify. This podcast is presented by Anne Swipe Right, a personal consultant agency setting the standard in online dating. Visit their website, www.andswiperight.com, to learn more about their personal styling appointments, private coaching sessions, and the creative, engaging dating profiles that they make for single men and women. Dating Hotline is hosted by Chloe Miller, founder and CEO of Anne Swipe Right. Follow her on Instagram at Chloe Mill. C-H-L-O-M-I-L-L. You guys, we love hearing from you, so please, please, please send us your fan mail to datinghotline at answipebright.com. That's datinghotline, D-A-T-I-N-G-H-O-T-L-I-N-E at answipebright.com. And follow us on social media, you guys, at answipebright.com and at Dating Hotline Podcast. But don't worry, guys. We'll put it all in the show notes on the Answipe Right website. Check it out there. Last thing, you guys, please subscribe to our podcast. Leave us a review on iTunes and tell all of your friends. This is the Dating Hotline. <laughs>